this time, I would like to bring to the ring the IPW Tag Team Champions, the Filthy Club. <laughs> champions have made their way to the ring on an event where you're going to see Johnny Storm and Jay Garner fight in a loser leaves IPW match and it's going to be Haskins and Havoc taking on Rob Lynch and Doug Williams. Without further ado, let's stick what is going on in the ring. This is IPW and these are your tag team champions. So, Jack Sexsmith, Rob Sharp, you've certainly been fighting champions since you won the Tag Team Championships at Clapham Calling. Faced many challenges, including last time we were here where you were beaten down by the Thrillers. What I'm interested in is how you feel about the Tag Team competition here in IPW at the moment, and specifically the people after those belts. Uh, bring them fucking on. Fundamentally, these belts don't mean a lot without defences, which is why, Bill, I'm a little bit gutted that we're not scheduled to compete tonight. Not popular here. Not popular what, at all. What, what is that all about, man? You're right. You aren't defending tonight, OK? But IPW is a land of opportunity. And, in fact, Anniversary 14, we are holding an international Super 8 tournament. Now, I don't know about if you guys believe it too, but I feel like I'm looking at two potential IPW future world champions in the ring. Strong statement by owner Billy Wood. So, with that being said, and how I see you guys, and I look at you as money, okay? Absolute money. So, with this being said, and that International Super 8 tournament coming up, and the winner of that tournament going to Undisputed at the end of the year to face whoever is the world champion, I've decided... Maybe, maybe, you never know. I have decided that at Fight For Your Right, Jack Sexsmith, Rob Sharp, you will face each other. Oh. And the winner will enter International Super 8. Guys, you've been fantastic. IPW Tag Team Champions, fantastic. And you will continue to be. However, at Fight for Your Right, I want to wish you both the best of luck. And whoever wins, congratulations. Wow, what a go kick there by Billy Wood to the heart of the Filthy Club. Good luck. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard the match announced, but please give it up for the Filthy Club! Well, the Filthy Club, well, they, they don't look as... They don't look as joyful, as fun as usual. It looks quite serious for the tag champions. Nice to see them in breaks, but they're high stakes indeed. The match has been suddenly later, and owner Billy Wood has decreed that the Filthy Club are going to have to fight amongst themselves. It is going to be Rob Sharp and Jack Sexton fighting for the place in the International Super 8. Speaking of the International Super 8, the next match coming away is a qualifier for that tournament that will take place in the September Anniversary Showcase. Genius Daily 
Ash would say that this is a former charge of his because indeed he is and he is a two-time IPW World Champion and there are very, very few men in the world that can say they've done that. That is music that is familiar to those of you who have been watching the Tuesday Night Graps. One of the great stars of UK wrestling and one of our former tag team champions. And his opponent from first North Yorkshire, this is Martin Kirby! The leader of the curb crawlers is here in IPW and what an opportunity has. Chris Brooks, the Calamari Catch King, of course, was supposed to be supposed to be fighting the German native Bad Bones here for a chance to enter the International Super 8 but the opportunity because this is IPW there's plenty of opportunities coming around it is going to be Martin Kirby who steps up to the plate to take on in his first one-on-one -on -one contest in a very long time it's Bad Bones and Bad Bones straight away living up to the first part of that name to oh, almost had him early Bad Bones is angry, he's incensed. He wants to finish Kirby off quick. He is looking to make the definitive statement. He wants to be a three-time IEPW World Champion. And if he follows that chartered course and he does so, he'll become only the second person in IPW history to be a world champion three times over. The other person, his former rival and the man he fought over the belt with the most, Martin Stone. So there is big stakes in it for Bad Bones. It's not just a case becoming world champion. He knows his rival's done it. He wants to cement his legacy in IPW by joining Martin Stone atop that pedestal. He's going to have to get past Martin Kirby first, though. And let me tell you, that is going to be a very tall order indeed. Flying heads, this is by Kirby, and Bad Bones is rocks. Bad Bones had a very strong start, but Martin Kirby, one of the most resilient superstars we've ever seen in IPW. Former IPW World Tag Team Champion, no less. Kirby's going to have to try and rely on that speed to beat Bad Bones, because it gets into a power game. Bad Bones will walk all over Kirby. But right now it is Kirby, and it is that speed, and it has taken Bad Bones off his feet several times. It may cause the two-time world champion to maybe have to assess things here, maybe see what he's going to do. Remember, Bad Bones coming in to live at Unit 9 today. He was under the impression he was going to be facing Chris Brooks, and that is quite the different prospect to facing Martin Kirby. So Bad Bones is basically in a surprise contest. It's like an open challenge, if you will. So Bad Bones is having to, wow! He's having to do things like that. He's having to seize the agenda. Bad Bones is a 14-year veteran of the game. Martin Kirby's no slouch. He's been around the business quite a long time as well. So experience-wise, they're fairly evenly matched. But when it comes to the top echelons of IPW, Bad Bones sits alone out of these two gentlemen. What a picture perfect surface. He floated Kirby down. Like a cruise missile. Of course, Bad Bones made his return at the International Battle Royale back in April. The former world champion made an immediate impact. As I have alluded to, this is his first one-on-one -on -one match since returning. Will Bad Bones manage to brush away Martin Kirby? Or is the leader of the Curb Crawlers come here with a surprise in mind? Is he going to the International Super 8? Is he going to put himself in line to become a future world champion of IPW? That is the question. Oh, and that question may have just had a comma put right in the middle. Bad Bones with a huge float over belly to belly. Two, two and three quarters, says your referee, Steve Linsky. We already know the first entrant into International Super 8, and that, of course, is the product David Starr. The last time we were with you live at Unit 9, he beat Damien Dunn to clinch that trilogy 2-1 and cement himself as numero uno into the tournament. Who is going to be joining him? Who is entrant number two? 
Will it be former IPW World Tag Team Champion Martin Kirby, or will it be two-time IPW World Champion Bad Bones? Experience is evenly matched, as I said. 14-year career of Bad Bones, 12-year career of Martin Kirby. Bob Bones, the slightly taller of the two, definitely the heavier of the two. If it comes to power, it's Bob Bones all day long. If it comes to speed, Martin Kirby is always going to edge it. If it comes to technical ability, I do believe Martin Kirby will have that as well. Sent on splash, and he put all of his back straight onto the chest of Bob Bones. It's only a two. Bob Bones is going to require a lot of effort to put him away, let me tell you. Very difficult to remove from that international battle royal. We've heard at the top of the broadcast that it's going to be Sex Smith and Sharp for another one of those places in the International Super 8. The International Super 8 is the challenge of a lifetime and it's also the opportunity of one as well. And that is why you see things like that from Bad Bones. He knows what's on the line. He's been there before. And that's why he needs to release German suplex. Martin Kirby straight on his head. Bad Bones is insatiable. He is stalking his man. He is stalking his prey. Going for another release, another release German suplex. And Kirby is down and Kirby is prone. Bad Bones running straight into Kirby. Kirby fighting for his position, he's fighting for this opportunity now. What a shot, taking all the wind out of Bad Bones. And this could be the opportunity that Martin Kirby needs, because boy, oh boy, does he need one, because he has been outpowered by Bad Bones in this contest. Maybe thinking vertical suplex here. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, my goodness gracious me! Oh, no! Bad Bones with the reversal of a lifetime! Kirby went for the vertical suplex. Bad Bones floated over and brain-busted him. On the second hardest part of the rim, good God, what a move by Bad Bones! How on earth did Martin Kirby get the shot of that one? I will never know. Bad Bones with a wicked, wicked brain buster. Crowd suddenly behind Kirby, I believe truly, because Kirby somehow found a way to kick out. But Mother Martin Kirby is dead weight to Bad Bones here. The fierce German in his first one-on-one -on -one contest in quite some time here in IPW, and he has been impressive and dominant. And he's going after fans at ringside. Steve Linsky and security teams having to make sure Bad Bones doesn't leave the rings. I tell you what, Bad Bones will rip those people limb from limb if, if he gets the chance. The crowd want the fan to get it. They want that fan to get it, but at the moment it's Martin Kirby who's going to get it. The effect of that brain bust meant that Kirby was still down when Bad Bones came to him. Kirby had a bit of time to recuperate, and that is why Kirby's trying to seize the agenda here. What a series of strikes, kicks, drop kicks, and jaw breakers from Martin Kirby. The fact that Martin Kirby is still fighting with any degree of forward motion after that brain buster, that is something incredible in itself. Hi ho, silver goes Martin Kirby! Takes him down for Swing Blade! Two! No! Swing Blade not enough on this occasion. Wow, Bad Bones was in complete control of that brain buster, but he took his eye off the ball just a little bit too much. And by taking his eye off the ball, he's allowed Martin Kirby to somehow get into this position. Kirby looking for the Sable Bomb, he loves to hit the Sable Bomb. But Bad Bones is a big, powerful guy, and it's difficult to lift him up. And that's exactly... Down to size, Martin Kirby was prone and Bad Bones just leveled him. No, not enough, not enough. 
Kirby and Bad Bones are showing you exactly what this means. They have both been back and forth, commanding. When they have had the agenda in this contest, they have been commanding and have not let up. This is what it means to be in the International Super 8. Bad Bones wants to be that three-time world champion badly. Look at this. What a manoeuvre by Martin Kirby! Hurricanrana from the ground and straight up! Uh-oh. Kirby with a kick! Down goes Bad Bones! Oh, Bad, Bo- Bad Bones doesn't know where he is! He's the ring part of town! Stunner off the top! That's absolutely insane by Marty Kirby! Has the leg hooked all the way over? No! That is the closest pinball I may have ever seen here at Uni 9! Bad Bones, it was like he was injected with adrenaline to get him to get out of this. What an opening contest this is here live at Unit 9. Martin Kirby and Bad Bones are throwing absolutely everything at one another. What is it going to take for Kirby? Kirby's beginning to think that's stunned off the top rope. He can have that brain buster. How did Kirby kick out of the brain buster onto the apron? And both men, oh, they're just, they're just slugging out here. Both men have very weak jelly-like legs. Who is going to get the better of the exchange? It's forearm, it's shot after shot after shot. Who is going to the anniversary spectacular, the 14th and oh, IPW! Oh, my goodness gracious me, by Bad Bones! It's over! Here is your winner, qualifying for the 2018 International Super 8 Tournament, Bad Bones! Martin Kirby brought his A game and then some, but the fierce German marches on, ladies and gentlemen. It's Bad Bones going to the 14th anniversary spectacular. He is entrant number two, along with the product David Starr. They will fight for a future world championship, guaranteed future world championship opportunity. Bad Bones has left devastation. Oh, wait a minute. Well, there's no sportsmanship here from Bad Bones. He's picked Kirby up. He's got him. Got him around the head. Well, fans want to see an embrace. I'm not sure that is Bad Bones MO, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, well, that... Well, that was nice to see. It's nice to be wrong occasionally. Bad Bones raising Kirby's hand. And deservedly so. What an effort from Kirby. Bad Bones incredibly destructive there as he makes his way to the 14th anniversary spectacular. In September, it's Rochester for a future World Championship opportunity. Now, though, we are going to turn our attention to the Z-Force division and bring you a showcase, a tag team showcase, showing you what the Z-Force is all about. As the music begins to filter into Unit 9, there is a trouble afoot, there is a storm brewing in the Z-Force division. And, of course, it's been spearheaded lately by one man... is a six-man tag team match set for one fall. Introducing first the combination of Andreas Kaur and the Minesweeper, Ashley Dunn. And that one man who is very noble by his absence is the wonder kid Johnny Storm. You see his protege, Andreas Kaur. The man who turned on Jay Garner in Milton Keynes. The minesweeper Ashley Dunn is also here. And if they have designs on the Z Force Championship, it could be very difficult to stop this combination. You have that brute strength and power from Andreas Kaur. And boy, oh boy, that bounce he does. It's lethal. And then you've got the speed and the technical know-how of the minesweeper Ashley Dunn. It's a hell of a combination. difficult challenge for Dunn and Core. they're not going to get an easy ride of it whatsoever because if you want to talk about Z-Force you've got to talk about one person in particular and their opponents 
Introducing firstly, he is the super contender, Curtis Chapman! You've got to talk about one person in the Z Force division, and he's not in the ring just yet. He's coming in a second, but let's talk for about Curtis Chapman, who had the match of a lifetime against super bad Kip Sabian. I'm going to reference that again in a minute, because I will talk to you about that match. If you haven't seen it, it's incredible. But here we are. This is the man of the moment. This is the man of the hour. Last time, of course, with Milton Keynes, he took the belt back. Maverick Mayhew, the Z Force champion, beat Amir Jordan the last time we were here alive at Unit 9. And Curtis Chapman and Maverick Mayhew, they're going to be a formidable team in their own right. These four men are about to battle it out. It's Johnny Storm versus the champions. And their tag team partner. Oh, that's a popular decision. That is a popular decision. Speak of the devil, the former Z Force champion. in wrestling keep your eyes on Amir Jordan ladies and gentlemen because this man is going straight to the top former Z Force champion of course lost it to Maverick Mayhew in a very game affair Jordan has his dancing shoes on and Milton Kings are ready to go with him. What an ovation for Jordan. The plays exploded. They knew just from the first opening notes of the music that something was coming that way that would bring the fun and the laughter and the dancing. And ladies and gentlemen, that theatrical slice of wrestling some people love it some people hate it I personally think it has a fantastic heart of place of things when it comes to IPW and no one really is embodiment of that more at the moment than Amir Jordan Jordan can't be stopped he's ready to Side checking, shaking and clapping hands. Amir Jordan's going to be knackered before the bell goes. He's going to take it easy because there's a hell of a challenge coming his way. What's well, currently three on two? Well, we, well, Steve Linsky's asking Dunn and Corey, saying, Are you going to go three on two? Ashley Dunn doesn't seem to have a definitive answer. a second well they could tell from Ahmed Jordan's first beats what was happening and they can certainly tell what's happening from these first beats and the final man in this six man tag team contest representing the anti fun police Chief Deputy Don well to be honest the Chief Deputy can be found wherever fun is found and ladies and gentlemen he did not take kindly to the idea of Jordan at all, and that has led to a distraction. Corin Dunn start beating down. 
Mayhew, Chapman and Jordan. Well, Damien's up with Normie speak to the crowd. He'd normally say something and normally rile them up a little bit. But instead, instead he used the fact that his opponents were expecting it. And that has led to this jump start, as it were. It means that Duncorn Jordan in trouble. Maybe he spoke a little bit too soon, because when it comes to speed, that is going to be held by Dunn, Jordan and Chapman. They've tried to isolate Andres. Cool, that's a smart strategy. Get the big man. He really is the X Factor as contest. You could argue that all five of the other competitors in this match are quite similar. They're high flyers, they're speed. They're daredevils. But Andres Cool is that power package. He could be the secret weapon for the team. Curtis Chapman's going all the way up. Top turn back go. Oh, he basically 450 that drops his legs. Oh, over everybody inside the super contender laying out all in his wake Maverick Mayhew and Andreas Kaur left in the ring Maverick Mayhew the several show his finger something he's been caught by Kaur oh no Andreas Kaur Andreas Kaur just launches Maverick Mayhew he launched him like a human dart he threw him right over the top Mayhew thought he was going to fly and I'm telling you, the power factor for this particular trio is Andreas Core. He may well be the deciding factor. Five speed daredevils and this absolute monster, Johnny Stoff's protege, and he's a monster. Tornado DDT off the ropes takes Aaron Core. I'm not sure Chapman got all of it, but he got enough to take Core out of the ring. Backstabber by Damien Dunn, the chief deputy, lays on Chapman. Jordan's up, and it's air on the air, ladies and gentlemen. Air Jordan! Minesweeper. Tries to take Amir Jordan. Everybody seems to be taking shots and taking them out, but Amir Jordan is fighting back. Amir Jordan is fighting back here. Oh, I spoke too soon. Picks the leg of Jordan and Ashley Dunn. DDT on Jordan. Mayhew catches. The Z Force Chairman catches the former number one contender and spikes him with his knees. This is Z Force Division action, laser, and it is fast, it is furious, it's every cliche under the book when it comes to speed and lethal force. Oh, what a shot by Ashley, done completely destroy Curtis Chapman. Almost chopped his head off like a block of wood. Andreas calls back in the ring, the first man to really leave the ring at that time. It's going for the pounce! Oh my goodness me! I mean, Jordan just got shot out of the cannon, courtesy of the protege of Johnny Storm. That pounce is possibly the most lethal move in IPW. Wave Ryder! Wave Ryder on Jordan, and he is down. Jordan's been destroyed by all three men here, but Mayhew and Chama make the save. And this is wise, this is wise by Dunn. And this is wise by Core. They continue to isolate Amit Jordan, who has just had an absolute pounding. Well, there's been no, there's been absolutely no hint of tags at all. I presume that Steve Linsky is letting this one go. He's got a lot of leniency because it's very difficult to control these gentlemen. But this is essentially running as tornado rules at the moment. Amir Jordan, I say he needs to make the tag, he doesn't necessarily make the tag in this position. What he actually needs to do is find some backup. Trying to distract, is the distraction? The distraction works! It's a double neck break up on the former Zed Voss champion. Oh, the minesweeper's just been swept by the Z Force champion who drops it right on his knee. Corkscrew brainbuster to the knee of the champion. Right, using Curtis. 
Using Curtis Chapman as a weapon. Why not? Jewel is on top, looking for the Samosa Swanton, quite possibly. And he's got an open field. The runway is clear for Jordan. Oh, look at, look at the prowess up top. Samosa Swanton on Ashley Dan. Two, this over. Here are your winners. The team of Curtis Chapman, Amir Jordan and Maverick Mayhew. Z Force champion Chapman and Amir Jordan. Johnny Storm's protégés have fallen this evening. They've fallen to the speed. I thought Andreas Corner hit that pounce. I thought that was the moment. But no, Chapman, Mayhew Jordan, they hang on in there and pick up a huge win here in the Z Force division. What a win there that was from your Z Force champion and his teammates. That is exactly what the Z Force division is all about. However, we're now going to turn from the Z Force division to look at the anarchist at James Castle. The anarchist James Castle, of course, he wants Sammy Smooth. The contract, as far as we know, has been sent, but it has not been signed. What is James Castle thinking? Where is his mind at? We could find out very, very shortly. At this time... I would like to bring to the ring the anarchist, James Castle. It needs very little introduction why James Castle wants Sammy Smooth to sign the contract, which I have just mentioned, ladies and gentlemen. But it boils down to this, James Castle, he was the Pin of the collective. That's what he was. He was the linchpin. He was the centerpiece. He really was the madness behind the collective and their dominance here in IPW. The Samix moving Lewis Howley cut the knees, cut the legs right from under James Castle and left him sort of a ref, sort of lost. So no wonder he wants Sammy Smooth. Well, on that note, let me start. It's fucking coming home, isn't it? There's one little fucker that still ain't come home. Well, I'm sure Mr. Castle would I mean, agree. They're right. They are right. And that little. He is dick. He is. Now that little shit still, still has not decided to show me his face yet. He still runs and hides, scared, knowing that I'm going to break his jaw. I'm going to leave him lying in the middle of this ring. If he hits him on that knee, he probably would break his jaw. That's the thing. Sammy Smooth is right to run from Castle. But fuck it. If he ain't going to come out and fight me, I'll take on anyone back there that wants to bring it on. We'll do this again, yeah? I'm going to keep doing it till he does. Come on. Who's coming? Well, not for the first or the last time we were here. What? Wait. Wait just a... Oh, no. Oh, Dean Ayas will be having kittens right now. I see a red carpet, I see paparazzi. I'm telling you, Ayas would be having and kittens right now. opponent, freshly back from Ibiza, and the newest star of reality TV on MTV, this is Kieran. Former IBW World Tag Team Champion. In D&D, Kieran Donnelly has been very much his own man for quite some time now. And Kieran looks like he's coming to challenge James Castle. Well, the last time we were live at Unit 9, and of course, if you haven't seen that, do go find us wherever you do find us. Whether it's the IWN, whether it's the Power Slam channel, whether it's ZZW Studios, or whether it is Fight on Fight, wherever you find us, do find us. James Castle had a triple threat match against Mike Bird and Fraser Thomas. 
and he put them to one side. So Kieran is stepping in with a very angry James Castle, who has a very recent pedigree of taking out people in open challenges. Not really sure this was the time to get the red carpet out. But here we go. Kieran's asking for the microphone. Oh, I was hoping Chris Hatch wouldn't give it to him, but he has. Can't have everything in life. England are in the quarterfinals of the World Cup at the moment. If, whoa, 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 whoa. If you want to keep it topical. I've just landed from Ibiza. I've got a headache. Shut up. Ibiza, of course, not in the World Cup. You know what? Shh. Breaking the football, fourth wall. You know what, James? You know what, James? You whining it. I'm talking. I'm talking. Time Kieran to shut up, but to be honest, he hasn't really said much. All he said you know was, what? Just, "You know what? I'm just going." All he's just said, he's come back from Ibiza. He's been on holiday. That's all. You know what, James? You know what, James? Approximation. I have one suggestion. One suggestion. One. 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 I suggest. Poor Kieran can't get a word in. Oh, there's a knee from Castle. I don't even know where the bell go, but it's keeps counting. I'm just like that. Red carpet's gone. All right. Castle's got the microphone again. I think they're right. Just a shit Kip Sabian. So now we've had the 10 second man, how about we bring out someone decent? Yeah, that's Panama. Fuck off. Let's have Colombia. Let's have Just call Kieran a poor man's Kip Sabian. Just call Kieran a poor man's Kip Sabian. Careful what you say, James Castle! Because just occasionally, just occasionally you catch lightning in a bottle, and if you talk to it too much, it can explode. James Castle there mocking Kieran, saying he was a poor man's Kip Sabian. And then he said, Let's have another fight. I want someone else. He wants somebody more credible. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he's under the name by mistake. Statistics. I will at some point get to that, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm pretty sure that no one has the win-loss record of Kip Sabian in IPW. Certainly not in 2018. You could argue that the IPW World Champion Mark Haskins would certainly run him close, but Kip Sabian would be a very, very well-deserved second if he's not first. The bell's gone, and uh, I just want to reiterate, I'm not sure if we picked it up, but I want to reiterate, Kip Sabian just asked the fans a question, the fans said, where's your briefcase? Well, the briefcase he's alluding to...
But they mentioned the briefcase. He said it was in the back because he didn't know he was scheduled to have a match. And that's true. Kip Sabin was not scheduled to be on this broadcast whatsoever. But an opportunity presents itself and he's trying to take it. I did mention earlier on Curtis Chapman. Uh, when Curtis Chapman was on, unfortunately, I didn't have to get around to saying what I wanted to say. Curtis Chapman and Kip Sabin had an absolute match for the ages at This Is IPW. Make sure you track that down. This Is IPW. It was one of our marquee matches and one of our marquee events. It was back in March. I highly recommend you find it on the IWN or wherever you find it. It was an intense encounter. You don't want to miss it. But right now, the second half of that equation, Kip Sabian, who has time and time again been in some of the matches of the night, some of the matches of the broadcast, every event that Kip Sabian takes a part in, it really gravitates towards him, you've got to argue. Look at the speed. The speed of the former two-time Z Force Division champion. What a tantalising contest this is. The linchpin of one of the most dominant tag teams in IPW history, the collective. Squaring off against the man who has been referred to many times by myself as the heartbeat of the Z-Falls division and the winner of the International Battle Royale. And not just the winner, ladies and gentlemen, went from number one to win it all. It was a miracle in Rochester from Kip Sabian. This is two of the very best in the moment, of the moment, at the moment, here in IPW. Two only, says Steve Linsky. Kip Sabin has been showing you his speed and James Castle has been showing you that brute force, that strength, that brawler type instinct. That's anarchist by name and that is anarchist by nature. Let's be honest, both are coming off with formidable wins. When you think about it, James Castle, as I said, he won that triple threat match against Fraser Thomas and Mike Bird. He's just taken out Kieran in seconds. Kip Sabin, of course, he's coming off that win against the King of Dong style, Jerry Ryan. Who is going to keep their momentum going? Is the momentum going to belong to Castle or Kip Sabian, who suicide dive through the air here at Milne Keynes? Superbad seizing the momentum for the moment, but who is going to come out on top? Who is going to carry on that rise in 2018? Will it be Superbad or will it be the Anarchist? Well, if that drop kicks anything to go by, it could very well be Sabian. It's only a two. You do imagine that strengths will be played to Kip Sabian. He's going to rely on majority speed moves, of course. Very technically sound as well. James Castle also has speed, but he is going to be looking to brawl. He's going to be looking to strike. He's going to be looking for that running knee in the same way that Kip Sabian will be looking for the Daphne Hallows and the Avadica driver. And this is some of that technical ability we mentioned that Kip Sabian has. He doesn't go to it all of the time. It is, it's, it's a majority of the time you'll see speed from Kip Sabian. But when he does go to the technical moves, he can be lethal. What's he thinking here? Oh, standing moons, oh, that's incredible. Middle of the ring. No. Two and a half, says referee Steve Linsky. James Castle, of course, determined to fight Sammy Smooth. Lewis Howley, he's out at the moment. As far as we know, he's injured. He has been nowhere to be seen for a very long time. We know we've seen Sammy Smooth in more recent times. He's been trying to roll up James Castle. And James Castle was a very wild man. He was an IPW World Tag Team Champion. And really, he was let down in the end. Uh-oh. Well, that might have been one move too far for Kip saying That slap might have been too far. The anarchist has that look on his face. Do you know what? I think he sees Sammy Smooth. He doesn't see Kip Sabian. He sees someone smug. He sees someone arrogant. I think he sees Sammy Smooth. And if I was Kip Sabian, I'd be very, very careful in trying to make James Castle even more angry than he is. Drop kicks in Sabian back. And James Castle's letting some of that fury fly with the knee right into the side of the former Z Force champion. Only two. The frustration builds for Castle, but it's a case of where it's building primarily because he's fighting Kip Sabian. And this is a marquee match, ladies and gentlemen. Kip Sabian, as I'm saying, he is the man of the moment here in IPW. He truly, truly is. It has been his year. 
I actually controlled the Z Force Division after winning at Magnificent Seven. And then he went from there to win the Battle Royale. No one has had the year. He has Mishinuku Driver on the bounce by James Castle. Not enough. Just not enough. But James Castle, I think primarily his focus may not be on Kip Saban here. His focus is on Sammy Smooth. And that's interesting to note because Kip Saban really... It's just James Castle he's focused on right now. He has the briefcase. He's got a world title shot. That's guaranteed. Well, everybody else in IPW is chasing after the international IP... The, 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 excuse me. The international Super 8 from IPW. Kip Saban is sitting back because he knows he's got a guaranteed shot waiting for him. Two. No. It's a mouthful, ladies and gentlemen. IPW's International Super 8. Kip Saban doesn't need to worry about that. He already has the title show. He's got him in the bank, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't need to worry about it. So while James Castle's worrying about Sammy Smooth and everyone else is chasing after those places, Kip Saban is trying to lay seeds. He's trying to lay dominance because he is focused. He knows what he has to do. He's looking at the World Championship picture and he's looking at it from afar just as much as he is looking up close. So he is intently focused on James Castle there. Well, James Castle himself is doing double duty. He's focusing right here and now on Kip Saban, but also Sammy Smooth is pulling that focus. And that focus can distract you sometimes just enough. Well, I think Kip Saban may have a real opportunity. Spinning fisherman suplex. No, not enough for Kip Saban. Seizes the momentum straight away. And there's an out penalty kick from Kip Saban. He's trying to cut that leg. Twisting Brainbuster with those legs hooked. Litsky's in position. Not enough. That was incredibly close, though. James Castle, used to having tag team partners by his side, remember, until the collective imploded, he always had someone watching his back. Now, that is a key difference between him and Sabian. Sabian is not used to having anybody watch his back. Kip Sabian is used to watching his own back, watching his own front. He really is the man who looks after himself, and he might be about to look after James Castle, the torture rack, looking for the Deathly Hallows. And now James Castle's got him up in the torture rack position. What's James Castle thinking? Kip Sabian managed to slip out. He's got him up there again. Reverse Defoe driver by James Castle floats over one, two, no! No, not enough for James Castle. Vaughty was so close. And this would be a hell of a win for James Castle. If James Castle could be a former two time Z4 champion and the winner of the International Battle Royale, it's not just Sammy Smooth that the doors will be open to for James Castle. The championship opportunities could be right on the tip. Maybe he'll get a crack for a place in the International Super 8. Went for the knee, it's scouted by Sabian. And Kip Sabian, I think, is making a mistake. He's getting into a brawl with James Castle. Kip Sabian should not be brawling with Castle because Castle is almost always going to win this exchange. And Kip Sabian's defence, he's giving it a good go, but he runs straight into a rolling forearm by Castle. Uh oh, I don't think he wants another. Was looking for the Mishinuku driver again on the bounce, didn't catch it, caught a roundhouse instead for his troubles. It's lights out just like that. James Castle catches absolutely all of it, and Kip Saban has been wiped out by the anarchist. Steve Linsky trying to make sure both men can compete. Oh, wait a minute! From behind! Wait a minute! James Castle hasn't seen! James Castle's back is turned! And Sammy Smooth from behind! Steve Lesky calls for the bow! And Smooth! Oh no! Oh no, Smooth! Twisted and dropped Castle right on his skull! Was absolutely heinous by Sammy Smooth. Well, I don't know what that is, his hand, ladies and gentlemen. One would assume that is the contract. Yes, it is indeed. It's the contract that Castle sent in for that match. And Fife, you're right. And Sammy Smooth has signed it in front of the audience.
Jones here, and Lyther Unit 9, and he has the upper hand over Castle. Oh, that's disgusting, that's despicable by Smooth. So James Castle finally got what he wanted, probably not the way he wanted, but he got what he wanted, he has that contract sign. Five feet right, it's going to be Sammy Smooth, it's going to be James Castle. You can cast that on the IWN. At this point, we'd like to say thank you for watching us live at Unit 9 on the IWN, on the Power Slam channel, ZZW Studios, and on Fight. Thank you so much for joining us. Right now, though, we are going to take a moment to witness what is about to happen. We're going to take a moment. This is going to be a hell of an occasion. It is one of the very best in Britain against one of the very best from Japan, an absolute legend. So, without further ado, it's enough from me. We send it to our MC, Mr. Chris Hatch, for introductions. The following contest is an international challenge match, and it is set for one fall. Introducing first. Well now, there is something quite fitting. I, I think IPW has moments that do seem to go very well. From the Wirral, he is a black belt in being hard as fuck. This is Smash Mouth, Chris Richway. There is always a sense of power an irony to IPW and here is one we have just seen a further degradation into the implosion of what was the collective well this was the man that started the collective off all of those mums over a year ago back in Fight Nation days before it amalgamated into IPW it was Chris Ridgway and he has a hell of a mountain in front of him now Ridgeway's had a few fights recently, we'll talk about that as this match progresses, but for now, one of the true legends. And his opponent, representing the pro wrestling from Japan, this is Naoki Tanuzaki! Tanuzaki is a legend of Noah Pro Wrestling, a legend of Japanese wrestling. And Chris Ridgway, a man who likes to bite off more than he can chew on occasion. Really for the challenge, well, he's put himself in quite the position here. Because it is Tanazaki in an IPW ring. Who would have thought they'd ever be saying that? Who thought they'd be hearing me say that? More to the point. And as the streamers fly here at Live at Unit 9. This international challenge match, the scene is set. It's Tanazaki, it's Ridgeway for the first time ever. The bell's gone, ladies and gentlemen, and you can expect this one to be hard-hitting. There really is no other word for it. That is the phrase, hard-hitting, collar and elbow tie at the start. You'd expect nothing less from these two professors of the ring. Tanazaki immediately grounding Ridgeway. That's where he wants to keep Ridgeway. But Ridgeway is wise to it. Tanazaki has a huge international pedigree. We know all about that. We know what this man can do. We know how he likes to lock opponents up. And that's exactly what he's doing now. But Ridgeway, let's not forget what Ridgeway has done. Very recently indeed, Ridgeway. Another Hastra Cradle. Straight away, Ridgeway is saying, you try and tie me a knot so I can tie you up a knot. Remember, Chris Ridgeway in this very building not that long ago, he beat Zack Sabre Jr. And not only did he beat Zack Sabre Jr., but he beat Zack Sabre Jr. His first match back in Britain since he became the new Japan Cup winner, the first ever from Europe. Ridgeway took Zack Sabre Jr. when he was at the very peak of his powers. So Tanazaki is in for a fight just as much as Chris Ridgeway is. Oh, 
goodness me, those kicks from Ridgeway echoing off the chest and the rib cage of Tanazaki. Head of steam by Tanazaki knocks down Ridgeway. Tanazaki doesn't just have that strength, he doesn't just have that raw power, he doesn't just have that fierce fighting style, but he also has the speed. Something, to be fair, we can say about Ridgeway as well. Two all-rounders going at it for the first time anywhere. Tanazaki trying to control the pace. We know he's got the speed, we know he can fly around the ring, but where he's most deadly, most effective, is grabbing someone's head and smashing it into his leg. That is where he thrives, he thrives on the idea of being smash mouth, which, ironically enough, is what we used to, we used to call Chris Ridgway, so they are very linear in that respect. A lot of similarities, what a Russian leg sweep that was by Tanazaki, could have knocked out Ridgway. Softly, softly, catch a monkey, that was the idea there. He softly swept into the Russian leg sweep and then snapped, snapped with every bit of force he could muster to ram Chris Ridgway's head into the canvas. There is a split crowd here. Connoisseurs, this audience certainly are, they know who Tanazaki is just as much as they know Ridgway. Tanazaki might not have been to the UK much, especially in comparison to Chris Ridgway, of course. But he has that international pedigree. He is very known indeed. Ridgway zeroing in on Tanazaki. Tanazaki had a good run of the play there, but Ridgway comes in with that stiff leg. And that is what you're going to be looking for in this contest. You're going to be looking for two individuals who aren't relying necessarily on going for heavy moves. They're not look necessarily looking for that one move that will win it all. They know that their opponent is not someone who needs to be pinned with one kick or one strike. This is going to go the distance, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to be a drawn-out affair. It's going to be about stamina and it is going to be about fortitude. Who is going to survive? That is how this contest goes down. I would argue, if you'd argue what the best approach is in this contest, I would suggest to you that Chris Ridgway is executing what he has to do perfectly. Knock down your opponent. Make sure that he needs recuperation. Make sure he doesn't get it. Make sure you are in the commanding position and then do your best to wear down the opponent. That's what Ridgway has done. He's knocked Tanazaki down. He's now trying to wear him down. Gets him in this chin lock. Tries to sap some of the energy. Stop the oxygen from circulating as it needs to do and that will give him a commanding position. And that's what this is. It's attrition. It's who can get the job done, yes, but it's about wearing the man down because that's the only way you're going to beat them. Tanazaki and Ridgway are both known for going the distance. They're known for kicking out a shot after shot after shot. They're known for being technical wizards in the ring. The only way you can beat someone like that is exactly how Ridgway beat Zack Sabre Jr. when we saw them here in Milton Keynes. That was he wore down Zack Sabre Jr. and then he seized the opportunity right at the end. And that's what it's about. It's about hanging with each other. Tanazaki, Tanazaki tying in knots. That is a modified single leg Boston Crab and then some has an arm trap. So Ridgway has only got one arm. He's only got one arm to drag himself. So it's very difficult to drag. He's having to lift his knee. Ridgway's in pain and he's, he, I don't, he, oh, did you see that? He, he, I don't know how Ridgway pulled the rope towards him. It's almost like he used the force. Ridgway is fighting from the ground, that is so difficult to do when an opponent is standing over you. What a kick by Ridgway, taking the air out of Tanazaki momentarily! Not enough. Both men have survived each other's storm so far. This is a real fight for momentum, we haven't seen either man really take the initiative or the momentum. It's been so evenly matched. That was beautifully executed by Ridgeway. 
And now we're getting to that stage in the contest where I would suggest that both men have been wearing each other down. Both men have been surviving. Maybe now it's time for both men to step up and do things like Ridgeway just did. Hit the kick. Hit the German suplex. See exactly where Tanazak is. See where his stamina is. See how he kicks out. This is Ridgeway being methodical now. It's not just about going for the pinfall. It's about seeing where your man is. Seeing how your opponent is doing. Uh-oh. Went for the kick one too many times and Tanazaki. Oh, Tanazaki has Ridgeway trapped. And Tanazaki, he's going to follow what Ridgeway did with that German suplex. He's looking for something to see where Ridgeway's at. Oh, he crushes Ridgeway. He absolutely crushes him. Leaping with malice in his eyes, Tanazaki takes Ridgeway and drives him into the canvas with all of his weight on top. The experience, of course, goes to Zanazaki. That's one of the differences between Ridgeway and Tanazaki for sure. Running knee strike, he stopped dead right on the skull. Only a two, only a two on that exchange. This is the 244th match in Ridgeway's career, ladies and gentlemen. But Tanazaki, this is Tanazaki's 1,529th. You can't take anything away from Ridgeway. We saw what he did to El Ligero in Manchester. We've seen what he did to Zack Sabre Jr. Milton Keynes. We know that recently Ridgeway is in form. But Tanazaki's been doing this a lot longer than Ridgeway has. He's got a lot more to show. When it comes to match counts, when it comes to win-loss records, when it comes to championships, in nowhere, of course. Six-time Open the Triangle Gate champion. A legend in Japan, a legend in Dragon Gate. But now he's here. But the man who claims to be one of the hardest in the entire United Kingdom. And goodness me, does Chris Ridgway back it up? Goes for another German! Right off the head goes Tanazaki, and there's a kick for his trouble. He's over like lightning. Not enough. Wow. Wow, Tanazaki. If you're liking what you see here, it's been announced it's going to be Ridgeway versus Timothy Thatcher in Manchester at our September show. But right now we're talking about Tanazaki who's firing himself up. And Ridgeway is in trouble because when Tanazaki gets fired up, those strikes will hit with even more force. No! What a combination from Tanazaki taking Ridgeway apart piece by piece there. Trying to hoist him up through the game, it's a roller by Ridgeway. Oh, this is a similar, oh, almost, Adam. This is a similar way to how he beat Zack Sabre Jr., of course. It was a roller right at the end. Ridgeway used the technique and he got him. And just like that, it's there. Here is your winner, Chris Ridgeway. I literally said that is exactly how. That's exactly how he beat Zack Sabre Jr. And then within seconds, it's exactly how he beats Tanazaki. Chris Ridgeway, what a year Ridgeway is having. Wow. Just took down one of the Japanese legends. And also to point out that Ridgeway was fighting with a great two towers bicep through that match. That was a marquee match, a first time ever for the ages. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation. Naoki Tanazaki and Chris Ridgeway. What a show of respect as we've just highlighted Ridgeway. He's had one sixth of the amount of matches that Tanazaki has. But Ridgeway has proven that experience is not always the turning factor. Because Tanazaki may be a legend, but on this occasion, the evening belongs to Ridgeway.
What an effort there by Tanazaki, but Ridgeway adds yet another notch to the prestigious list of people he has vanquished here in IPW. Speaking of vanquishers, we now turn to the very, very volatile situation between Havoc and Haskins, the unstoppable deadly Joe that they truly are, and Rob Lynch. Rob Lynch this time has decided to draft in Doug Williams. This is going to be a tag team match of the 80s. Here it comes. It's Havoc, Haskins, Lynch and Williams. We talk about Haskins, we talk about Havoc, and we know what they bring to the table. We know what they've been bringing to the table in IPW for quite some time. But what we touched on a little bit less there from what I've just said was what Rob Lynch brings to the table. Rob Lynch, of course, former IPW Tag Team Champion in his own right. This match is a tag team match set for one fall. Introducing first from London, this Talking about Rob Lynch, look at the return he had. International Battle Royale, Rob Lynch made a definitive statement. He made a statement when he came back. Almost wrestled the IPW Championship away from Mark Haskins on a very recent broadcast live at Unit 9. And what a tag team partner he has with him, just to add to the prestige. Wrestling's finest ambassadors, this is Doug Williams! Rob Lynch has made one hell of an impact since he's come back, and this man has been making an impact for 25 years in the business. It's the ambassador, it's Doug Williams. They do have their work cut out for them during this broadcast, so ladies and gentlemen, let's be honest, Rob Lynch is formidable as is Doug Williams, but they are going up against a team who truly have been on the same page, and I don't even mean the same page a little bit, I mean constructively against any shadow of a doubt, the most formidable duo in IPW history. We're not just talking the world champion. We're not just talking one of the longest reigning world champions of all time. We are talking about two men who since joining together have been unstalled. They have laid waste and wreaked quite literally havoc wherever they have turned. Rob Lynch has felt that sting before. Austin Aries has felt that sting before. Matt Tremont, the American Deathmatch legend, has felt that sting before. And their opponents, firstly, Year. He is your IPW World Champion, the Workhorse, Hell Bent Mark Haskins! And I can tell you, I don't think our camera saw this vantage point, but I'd like to make it clear anyway. Rob Lynch's eyes did not flinch for a second off Mark Haskins. Mark Haskins! Intently staring at Rob Lynch, Rob Lynch intently staring at Mark Haskins. These two are going to meet. IPW fight for your right. July 22nd, the IPW World Championship will be on the line. Rob Lynch had a taste, he was so close last time. If he gets the free count the next time he's in the ring with Mark Haskins, other than today, he will be an IPW World Champion. And the reign of Haskins will be over. Haskins gave the choice to Rob Lynch, he extended an olive branch. It might have been coated in a bit of malice, but he gave him an olive branch nonetheless. He turned it down, and when he turned it down, he didn't just face the wrath of the IPW World Champion, Mark Haskins, but he faced the wrath of one of the longest reigning IPW champions in history, and the man who created a dynasty around his own name, his own mystique the kings of the deathmatch himself and his tag team partner from Camden in London he is the king of the gods Jimmy Harris and when we qualify him as king of the deathmatch we have 
have to make that clear why we're saying it. The winner of the Tournament of Death 2017 and the man who destroyed the American death match legend, Matramon, on what would be considered hometown territory in Clapham. You could give a slight assist to Haskins, but Jimmy Havoc fought for a lot of pain and went to war with Tremont, and he won. And that little asterisk where we're saying he had a bit of help from Haskins, that is the story here. It's Haskins and Havoc, the same page, quite possibly the two most dominant forces in IPW have joined since Parade of Champions, since Mark Haskins lost the second of his three matches against Austin Aries. They then joined, they then fused together, and ever since they did that, they have been truly unstoppable. The Haskins and Havoc, of course, they extended the Olive Branch to Rob Lynch in the first place. Rob Lynch, of course, denied it, and while well, he, let's be honest, he basically told them where to go, they then beat him down. But Rob Lynch wasn't satisfied with that going down the way it did. Of course he wouldn't be. He was being down. So what did he do? He cost Havoc and Haskins the World Tag Team Championships. Last time it was live at Unit 9, the Filthy Club retained the titles. Because of Rob Lynch deciding he'd interject, he got a bit of a kicking for his troubles, but he certainly made a statement to Haskins. to expose like a pearl de Kaga Mark Haskins. Well now, well now that is interesting. Mark Haskins knows. He knows he's got Rob Lynch at five for your right on the on the 22nd of July. Went for the acid rainmaker early to Jimmy Havoc and he said he runs into a shoulder block from Rob Lynch. It's not often you see Jimmy Havoc put on the back foot at the beginning of a contest but that's what's happened. Pokes the eye by Havoc. Linsky trying to admonish Havoc. I'm not sure that's going to get very far. Oh, the power! The power of Lynch trying to take Havoc's head off, and you know he'd like to. We heard the comments that Rob Lynch made to Havoc when Havoc tried to recruit him along with Haskins. Lynch wants no part of either of them. He's dealt with them before, and he told them where to go. Shoulder block off the top. The battle-tested one. His career completely rejuvenated in recent times. And here is a man who is the personification of rejuvenation. The ambassador. On the last occasions we saw Doug Williams, he took down the ring general Christopher Daniels. That happened in Clapham. Clapham was hun happy hunting ground for Doug Williams and for Jimmy Havoc. Jimmy Havoc beat Tremont and Doug Williams he beat Christopher Daniels, two high-profile scouts from the King of the Goths on the Ambassador. Find themselves at opposite ends of the ring here, though. And with that, is Lynch back in off the tag from Williams. Oh, Rob Lynch just, he just, he just drilled. He drilled Havoc down, he just he pushed him with serious intent, smacking the turnbuckle. Could have done damage there to the top of the back of Havoc. Jim Howie, of course, was IPW world champion for almost 800 days. Only the East End butcher Shah Samuels has held the belt for longer. And in that time, Jimmy Havoc wasn't just champion, he was the king, he was the ruler, he was the dystopian leader of a dynasty in IPW. Oh, well, Doug Williams, the experience shining through, saw Haskins doing, saw what Havoc was doing. You have to have eyes in your back of the head. Oh, what a kick, and the eyes in the front of his head just almost rolled over. Thanks for that shot from Haskins. 
five out there by Jimmy Havoc and Havoc and Haskins take control taking Lynch off the apron I think serving more to antagonise him it's an interesting question to ask normally we ask ourselves in, we ask ourselves in matches like this who has got the oh look at this trying to antagonise Rob Lynch that is the game plan by Haskins you have to ask yourself what is the game plan who is the person in this match that would last the longest in a fight if this was a one on one contest who would we say would go I would wager every single competitor in this match would be that person in any other contest Lynch Haskins Williams Havoc they are people that go the distance they know how to take pain they know how to dish pain they are born survivors all four of them so I'm not really necessarily sure this is going to be a question of intestinal fortune I'm not sure this is going to be a case of who can survive more because all four of them are known for it they really are Mark Haskins the greatest comeback fighter in IPW history Jimmy Havoc he goes through pain like a chainsaw he takes it he dizzes it he doesn't stop Doug Williams 25 years he's built on resiliency and Rob Lynch is called battle tested their LOs are about survival so we've got to look elsewhere. We look at the technique of Mark Haskins. He tries to apply this cross face. Williams is fine out of it, though. Trying to fight out of it. Haskins trying to lock it. Williams has his arm. Look, he's got his hands locked. The hands locked, they stop the move from being correctly applied. So where'd you look? Well, with Doug Williams, probably the more powerful. Probably more powerful of the four men, maybe. Rob Lynch also quite powerful. I think the power game certainly goes. So he goes to Lynch and Williams. However, I think the countenance there is at the speedier of the teams is definitely Havoc and Haskins. And I think the clincher, quite possibly, as far as I'm concerned, is Haskins and Havoc here. They're double teaming ways. They have wrestled as a tag team quite a bit over the last few months. They've got to know each other inside out and that is what has made them unstoppable. They have had each other's backs. I think the experience of working together, that could really be the difference. Of course, not taking anything away from the prowess of Rob Lynch and Doug Williams as tag team competitors. Of course, Rob Lynch, former IPW World Tag Team Champion in that respect. Doug Williams has held tag belts all over the world. But where they don't know each other that well, they haven't had any time to get the feel for each other. For knowing when each other is really in trouble. Havoc and Haskins have been like clockwork ever since Parade of Champions. They have been completely in sync. But the story here, ladies and gentlemen, the story is that Doug Williams has been in the ring for a long, long time. He has taken heavy damage. Yes, he managed to really avoid the crossface for the most part. But Havoc and Haskins have been doing a number on him. Rob Lynch has been on the outside. He has been recuperating. Haskins with a head of steam. Oh, look at Haskins! Haskins used a minute to take down Rob Lynch! That was brilliant by Mark Haskins. Don't like to always admit the sort of motives that are going on there, but that was a brilliant move. Haskins has not only ensured that Williams is isolated, but there's now no one to tag, even if he had the moment to tag. Haskins and Havoc knew, I really think they knew, that Williams was the danger here, because Williams is the more experienced. Williams is used to being in wars like this. Battle tested Rob Lynch is used to being in wars himself, but Doug Williams has a plethora. He has an encyclopedia of experiences. He knows what it is to fight back. They knew to take down Williams first. It was wise, but you can't keep Williams down forever because he always gets a moment to hit a suplex like that. And believe you me, when Williams hits a suplex, it is always the change of a channel, the revolving of the game. It is the turn of a card. It is the roll of a die. Because when Douglas hits a suplex, everything changes. And how about a second one for your trouble, Mr. IBW World Champion? Lynch is back to his feet. Havoc, Havoc wants in. He wants Haskins to make the tag. Williams trying to crawl himself over, moving quite slowly. Haskins definitely the fresh round of him and Williams. Gets the tag to Havoc. And there it is. Rob Lynch is in. And Rob Lynch is pretty fresh. Yes, he's been knocked off the apron a few times. But I think he's the fresher of the four men in the ring right now. What a sent on on Havoc. Crushing the air out of the king of the goths. Rob Lynch has got a lot of pan up aggression to get off his chest and he would love, he would love to pull away Haskins and Havoc on the eve of his World Championship match at Five Fuel Right. 
He's demolishing Jimmy Havoc here. How often do we see Jimmy Havoc take shots like that? Without any sort of reply. Lynch has had another Haskins, but there's two of them, Rob. You've got to remember there are two of them in the ring. Always, always check your six. Always check the side. And that is the mistake that Rob Lynch has made, and that is why Haskins and Havoc are in control in this contest, because they've had each other's backs. They are working in tandem. They know exactly what they're doing. That is the inexperience of the tag team of Williams and Lynch. A spear! A spear! I don't believe it! A momentary error! A momentary error by Havoc and Haskins! Rob Lynch with the spear takes Havoc out of commission and Williams is inserting himself in this contest! Went for another T-bone, didn't quite catch it! Haskins with the arm bar! It's rolled over by Williams! Williams can't be stopped! A variation of the Colombian look at this! Look at this by Douglas, that was absolutely extraordinary! Absolutely extraordinary, wasn't it? And Havoc breaks it up. Goes to the acid rainmaker, where's Connors? Havoc sent to the outside, not all the way. Goes all the way, thanks to Williams. This axe is getting fast, it's getting intense. The ambassador with a roll up. No, and Havoc pulls out Steve Linsky. Havoc pulls out Steve Linsky. I'll tell you what, they're willing to do anything. Oh, that's another difference between the two teams. Williams dies through the ropes. I tell you what, 25 years in the business, and he can still fly away like a cruiserweight on occasion. That is why he is such a deadly opponent. Oh, Williams is taking Asker. <laughs> Williams is taking Havoc. He's taken through the crowd. Jimmy Havoc, one of the greatest brawlers on the planet, but Williams is no slouch at all. Oh, goodness me, where are they going? Oh, off the wall! Off the wall! Tight in the ring that Lynch and Haskins getting a moment of recuperation, but it's Williams and Havoc at the moment. Where have they gone? Where are they going? They've, they've left us. Our, our cameras can't pick this up. We've got nobody back there. All I can tell you is there's a brawl going on. There is a fight going on, and in the ring. IPW champion Haskins is prone, he's hitting with a title belt! Hit him with a title belt! Well, I think Steve Linsky, sorry, Steve Linsky was in the back tracing after Williams! And Havoc, two! No. Mark Haskins, oh, wait a second here! Before I beat you like the bitch that you are again, I want to remind you, last time we fought, I gave you the option to join us! because I know how many problems you have in your life, but it's only now I've come to realize that the problem in your life is you. Oh, that's absolutely heinous by Haskins. Your life is a failure. You're a failure. And your hopes and your dreams of beating me for that championship are as much as a failure as you are. You have no hope of beating me for that championship and you have no hope in life. Oh, he's the most horrible words I've ever seen from Mark Haskins. The spear! Oh, he spit the life out of Mark Haskins! Let's get the cover! Rob Lynch has been the world champion! Here are your winners, the team of Doug Williams and Rob Lynch! Mark Haskins talked as he always has, and Rob Lynch with a damn despair, I swear to God he is ever here! Second, Mark Haskins will lose the World Championship and the battle-tested one will become the conqueror of IPW. Mark Haskins.
Haskins tried to make a statement on the microphone, but Rob Lynch was not prepared to do the same. He made his statement by driving through Mark Haskins like a truck. Staring at Rob Lynch is saying this is IPW and the World Championship is coming to me. He does not care about Haskins. This is beyond personal. This is hatred, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Haskins talked just a little bit too much on this occasion. Rob Lynch, with the spear of his career, taking down the IPW World Champion. If he hits it in Rochester on July 22nd, Lynch will be the new IPW World Champion. Speaking of champions, we are now going to see a match that is quite a while in the making. It's Zaya Brookside defending the Women's Championship against Bobby Tyler, who just will not leave her alone. The following contest is set for one fall. One fall! And it's for the IPW Women's Championship. <laughs> Introducing first the challenger. Well, when we say that Bobby Tyler will not leave the IPW Women's Champion alone, what we mean is that every single time I've seen Bobby Tyler, she has been attacking Zaya Brookside. Zaya Brookside has often been in a hard-fought contest like she was against Kaylee Ray, like she was against Tennille Dashwood. And Bobby Tyler has picked her moments. She's come down to the ring and she has taken the champion out. And that is what has led us to hear. Live at Unit 9, it's IPW Women's Champion Zaya Brookside defending against Bobby Tyler. Would have expected to... So I've been having a few problems here. Bobby Tyler not making her way to ring just yet. Hang on a second here. So trying to get word from Chris Hatch and people at Sound Desk can't see... I think Bobby Tyler couldn't be far. I think Bobby Tyler's actually... Well, this does happen occasionally, ladies and gentlemen. This is live, of course. Bobby Tyler, of course, eagerly awaiting this world title match. I'm sure she wants that women's championship, so this must be... She must be way laid backstage. I'm not quite sure what is happening. For a second time, obviously, the music is playing. I mean, obviously, this is an indication to a wrestler that it's time to come out. They'll know what it's for. The only thing I can think of that Bobby Tyler is not back. So I haven't actually managed to bump into her before the broadcast. I had it on the forty. She was here, but Chris Hatch is introducing the champion. Well, Chris Hatch has just decided to. Well, I know Zaya Brookside is here. I have seen Zaya Brookside. I know the champion's here. Bobby Tyler, well, if she, if she doesn't come out, that's going to be a, what a mistake that is. She fought for so long in a way, not in the right way, of course, but she fought to get a women's championship match to put herself out there. Wow, this is a huge mistake by Tyler. But anyway, I know the champion is here, so Zaya Brooks was about to make her way through the curtain, and here she is. IPW women's champion Zaya Brookside. She's had enough of Bobby Tyler attacking her. Well, this time it's going to be Zaya. Face to face. There's no chance of Bobby Tyler to jump the champion now because she's in the ring. Defender on three continents. Defended in Japan. The star of them successfully. Defended in America. And of course, defending up and down the country for IPW. Ever since she's won it, she's taken on everybody. Kaylee Ray, Tennille Dashwood, Rhea O'Reilly. The list keeps getting longer and longer. And in truth. And introducing the challenger. And here we go again for the third time. Well, Bobby Tyler is making a huge mistake. You could argue it's mind games to a certain extent, but... Well, Bobby Tyler came through the crowd. Bobby Tyler, I was always looking behind me. Bobby Tyler came through the crowd. Well, 
Well, that's mind games from Bobby Tyler. The following say. contest is for the IPW Women's Championship. Introduce. Whoa! Bobby Tyler just puts Chris Hutch. Just puts Chris Hutch down to the canvas. Oh, the, the... Chris Hutch is knocked down by Bobby Tyler. She came through the crowd. There was mind games, and Zion Brockside takes out Tyler. Bobby Tyler just wiped out Chris Hutch. He was trying to do introductions. And Steve Lesky trying to pull off the champion. Well, the bell is not wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, Bobby Tyler not doing things by the book. The unorthodox approach has wiped out our MC Chris Hatch. So Brookside was having none of it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bobby Tyler! Bobby Tyler with a title ball! She just struck Zion Brooks under the head with the IBW Women's Championship! Well, that's not yours, you haven't won anything! Bobby Tyler giving the bell to Zion Brooks, and what is this all about? once again with your champion on her back now as your number one contender I can choose to have my title shot any place anywhere anytime I'm not sure that's actually true, Bobby. I'm not sure you can pick when you have your championship shot. And it certainly isn't going to be here in front of you, Milton Keynes scum! <laughs> and Bobby Tyler continuing to attack Zion Brookside. Continue to attack. And security are getting in there trying to remove her. It was about time they did their jobs. What was security being paid for? So Brooks, I could have done with that just a little bit earlier on. A tremendous shame there that we were robbed of the IPW Women's Championship match. What a heinous actions by Bobby Tyler, taking out not just Cyber Oxide, but MC Chris Hatch as well. We will be returning to Building Kings for our next live year night. That is coming your way August the 1st. Tickets are available ipwk.bigcartel.com. But here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The main event it is the one Milton Keynes demanded. It is the one they are going to get in a loser leaves IPW match. It is Johnny Storm finally against Jay Garner one on one. Who is going to face their Waterloo? We're about to find out. Let's take it for the final time to our MC, Mr. Chris Hatch. The following contest is your main event of the evening. <laughs> It is a singles match set for one fall where the loser must leave IPW. Introducing first. Jay Garner looks ready and do you know what he has to be? 
because if he's not ready, that's the end of his IPW career. It's been month after month after month that Jay Garner has been taunted. He has been beaten. He has been disparaged along with his hometown by the wonder kid Johnny Storm. The former IPW world champion. He now has... Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, he's... Well, that's actually done. And that's Andreas Call. Wait a minute. They're not supposed to be out here at all anyway. Storm! Johnny Storm with a steel chair! The bell's been caught by Linsky! What the hell's that about? Storm! On the cover! Only a one! Only a one! Jay Garner and Johnny Storm finally one on one here at Milton Keynes! It's live at Unit 9 and the match that we knew was scheduled to happen at some point in the future! It's got to fever pitch! Steve Linsky! Steve Linsky's just Ladies told Ladies and gentlemen, the referee has ejected Andreas Kaur and Ashley Dunn from ringside. And there is the official word for MC Chris Hatt, thankfully back to his feet. And Jay Garner! Jay Garner wasn't happy for Steve Linsky to slowly eject them. Jay Garner decided to take matters into his own hands by wiping out the protégés. Smith Jay Garner takes the Wonder Kid over. Jay Garner in the fight of his life against one of the best this country has ever seen. Former IPW world champion. One of the great, great revolutionists of IPW and the Cruiserweight division. Jay Garner and Johnny Storm. They are fighting amongst the crowd here. In Milton Keynes. Johnny Storm is pursed up and just dives and crushes Jay Garner. And that took the air out of every single man and woman here in Unit 9. And they can say all the like to Johnny Storm, but he's the one in charge at the moment. Shot by Garner in reply. And Garner is taking out all that fury and all that aggression on Johnny Storm. It's month after month of this. And we're going out. We're out of here. Oh, the entire crowd. The entire crowd are moving and they are shaking the ace. Luckily, we've got cameras. We've got cameras following. The referee, Steve Linsky. Quite rightly showing some knees in. Johnny Storm is taking out people from the audience as well. Johnny Storm is in a sea of people that do not like him. And he is trying to take out the hometown hero. Jay Garner fighting for his career, but so too is Johnny Storm. Remember, it is not just Jay Garner's career on the line. It's Johnny Storm too. You can say what you like about Johnny Storm, but he has decided to go out amongst the people that despise him the most. In front of those Milton Keynes people, he's disrespected. Where are they going now? Jay Garner's head Steve Linsky clearly wants that to be a decisive winner you can't blame that at all with there's this much on the line you don't want to leave it a chance you don't want someone to say oh, what about this decision or what about that decision it needs to be clear it needs to be clinical and that's why Linsky is letting this one go as much as he is
Storm has made sure that they are returning towards the ring. It's my understanding. It's my understanding that this match can end in pinfall or submission count or underscoreification. I've not been told to the contrary. Maybe Steve Linsky really is using that leverage that he has. He's using that position to say, look, let's make this a fair contest. It's Garner going for the shooting star price. If he hits it, it'll end the career of Johnny Storm. Here in Melbourne Keynes, it's hometown. No! Storm moves out of the way and Jay Garner. He's in critical position. Johnny Storm, is he thinking wonder kick or is he thinking wonder whirl? He's going for the wonder whirl. He got it. He got it. One, two, that's three, it's over. Jay Garner's gone. Wait a minute, he had his feet on the ropes. Restart this match, Linsky. Johnny Storm just laid out. Johnny Storm laid out, Billy Wood. Come on, my Garner. Oh my God, this it's gone in. Oh, this place is insane. Garner's up top. He's going for the shooting star. Johnny Storm's career. Shooting star. One, two. Jay Garner! Jay Garner! He hit the shooting star price as he's done time and time again here in Elden Keynes. The match has been reshot and we all remonstrated. Trying to say Storm's feet was on the ropes to protect Jay Garner's career from being unduly taken away from him. Billy Wood got knocked out by Johnny Storm. We're there! We're out to well for a second time! Jay Garner middle of the ring! No, Jay Garner kicks out of the Wonder Wall. Goodness me, high drama in your main event of Lila Unit 9. It's as personal, it's as volatile as it gets. Johnny Storm. Moto connected. Jay Garner's down, hooks the leg. He's got him! Oh my god, he beat him! Here is your winner, Johnny Storm! And ladies and gentlemen, per regulations of the match, Jay Garner's career in IPW is over! Well, Johnny Storm tried to cheat his way to victory, but I'm telling you, I've got one of the best violence points here. He did not cheat to get the victory in the end! was restarted and Johnny saw me hit the moons on off the second rope and he pinned him one two three Linsky selling him it's free yo well this is not the ending anybody wanted least of all Jay Garner you know what MK I'll give you this you're one hell of a crowd and Jay, you're one hell of an athlete. Now I know we've had our wars in this building, but one thing I will say, you've earned my respect, boy. Well, finally, finally, something from the one to get, finally. After all that, you think I don't want to shake his hand? He fought his ass off and he's now finished in IPW. The least I can do is shake the man's hand. Well, that's magnanimous if nothing else from Johnny Storm. The 
that's good to see from Johnny Storm finally after months and months of this after months of tormenting him in his hometown no oh goodness me there are no there are no depths which Johnny Storm will not stoop here in Milton Keynes Johnny Storm with the ultimate disrespect the ultimate disrespect indeed Jay Garner's IPW career has come to an end at the hands of the wonder good Johnny Storm and what a horrible horrible way to go